Hello folks, my name is Matt Peterson, a trainer here at Pragmatic Works, where we do everything as you saw in that intro video from on-demand learning, hackathons, virtual mentoring, private trainings, uh, and we have this YouTube channel. So if this is your first time, make sure you like, subscribe to stay up to date of all the videos that we put out. And in this video, what I want to do is revisit back into this Power Platform series, episode 13, the patch command. And what the patch command can do is it can help create a new record without using a form. So I had a few emails that came in after this video series has been put out. And I said, hey, Matt, I saw the submit form action that you did. Is there another way to where I have more design control? And you definitely do. And that's what I want to show you in this video. So here's our current application. So when I hit play here, I come on over, I pick my park, I put in some comments, I can choose a date, I'll choose like the uh, 29th here, we'll hit OK, we'll hit save, I'm going to confirm my record, it was just created, and boom, here's the record that we have. Now, what I want to do here is I want to do something a little bit different, because what if you don't want to put all of your fields in one form? Because forms, you can change the amount of columns that you have within your form. Um, you can change, let me get the whole form selected here. There we go. The columns, the layout. But other than that, the design is pretty much fairly rigid. So what I'm going to show instead is how you can design your own screen in order to create a record without using a form. So for here, this is a new screen, no form on the top. When I click a record, boom. I'm taken to the screen and look, I mean, this is not a well-designed app. I did this on purpose. I have these input controls all over the place on the screen, but that's the beauty you get with patch. You can put your controls wherever you want to. The con with patches is a little bit of a longer code, so we're going to have to write this. But notice that with these controls, I've done the same thing that I've done in my app from earlier. I put in default values, like I want the user email for this default. I want the gal selected park ID to populate. I want the inspection date to be today's date. So default values are still allowed. Now when I come over here to my save inspection button, this is where on a form we would have used the function submit form and we're off to the races. Here it's a little bit different. So let's take a look. So I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to start off with the command called patch. Now patch is used to create new records or update records. This video is all about creating new records. My next video is going to be how you can update records and some common use case scenarios for that. So the way that we decide to do a new record, we first declare the source that we're putting this record in. So my inspection table, comma, now it says the record to be patched. Well, I'm not actually updating a record. I'm making a new one, which is why I'm going to go down to the next line here. And let me expand out my formula window for you which is why when we get to record to make new ones, we use the function called defaults. And then we say where this is being created. So again, it's our inspection table. So that right here, this is what you use to create a new record. All right, updating records, next video, so stay tuned. So we're gonna go comma. Now for the update, we start this off with the curly brace, and now we declare all of the columns that we want to write to from this application. So for example, we'll start off with inspection date. Now inspection date, I have to reference my application to say where's the inspection date coming from. Well, it's coming from this control, DTN inspection date. That's my date picker. So what I'm going to do is come up here and say for inspection date, I need you to go look in my date inspection date uh, text input, which is a control. Now I have to tell it what do I need from that control, what property from our property drop down of that date picker do I want to reference? So I want dot the selected date. So that's my first column. Now I just do a comma and I start chaining my columns together. So the next one I want is going to be my inspector. Now my inspector is coming from this input. And if we take a look over here, this input is INP inspector. So on my save button, go up to inspector, and then I'm going to put INP inspector dot. I want the text value from that control. And then finally, we're going to go to the inspection date. So inspection date, which is coming from my date picker, which I'm not going to show you, but I just know it's called date inspection date. Oh, not inspection date. We've already done inspection date. I want, apologies there, I want the park ID. And that's coming from my input park ID dot text. And then I wrap that off with a 
single uh, another brace, but I'm getting an error. And so the reason I'm getting an error here, if we hover over, it says park ID does not match number, it found text. So my park ID is a number field in my SQL Server table. This is a text input control. There is no number input control here. So here's what we have to do. I have to wrap this. I'll come off, pick off screen here. I need to wrap this text. I need to turn it into a number value. So I'm going to go value. What do I want to turn into a number value? Input park ID dot text. All right. So now I've closed off this and now I can close off the final patch. So now I should be in business. So now I'm going to do a semicolon and we're going to navigate us back to our SCR, the one with patch in it, SCR patch. So that way we can validate that the record is created. All right, so moment of truth. We're gonna hit play. I'll put an inspection date here of the 29th. I'll hit okay. And then I'm gonna hit save inspection. All right, now when I hit save inspection here, it didn't take me to the right screen because I referenced the wrong one. This should have taken me to screen main patch, not patch. So for the future validation, make sure I go to the right one. So screen main patch. But let's go over, look at screen main patch, and we should see the record that I just created. And there it is, July 29th. I didn't put the rating field in, but you could, if I wanted to, on this screen, if I wanted to do a, a rating control, that is one of the inputs here and then I could reference that on my save inspection. But let me show you one of the little issues we have. So congratulations, you now know how to use patch. It writes it to the data source. But here's some issues you're probably gonna come up with that I wanna showcase. So if I come over here and I hit play, and I go back to, I'll go Black Creek Park and Trail. Notice what we have. The inspection date is still saying July 29th. Why is it saying July 29th? Well, because what happens is once we, it has a default value of today, but the minute we change that, the default value is wiped out. So when we come back to this screen, it's going to print whatever was there last. Like if you had a text box where people put in like free writing comments or, or things that weren't default values, after they type it in, they hit save, they come back to the screen, all of that stuff is still in there. So here's how the really easy way to get rid of anything that was put in these input controls how to wipe them out and either go back to blank or whatever the default values you coded in there. So how we do that is fairly simple. All we have to do is on this screen, we're gonna go to its on visible property and we're gonna put in the function called reset. And then we tell it what control to reset. Basically wipe out the value from it and honor the default formula if there is one. So mine was called DTE inspection date. So that is the code that we use. Now when I hit play, I'll pick a random inspection date here. We'll go up to the 18th. I'll hit OK. So August 18th, save inspection. There is the inspection for August 18th. If I click to make a new record, boom. Now it goes back to that default value. So hopefully in this video, Patch, you got your first understanding of how to create new records. Uh, my next video I put out, I promise, is gonna be how to use Patch to only update specific values in a record and some use case scenarios around that. So thanks for watching, I hope to see you in the next one.